This Ridley-O is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. They say that John Adams was able to uh, stick up for the rights of British soldiers in the Revolutionary War era uh, because, precisely because, he was such a dedicated patriot. Because he had such a track record at that point of uh, serving the colonial cause. In the same way, although sort of on opposite sides, I would like to think that my track record of closely following the government's quarantine guidelines, at least the ones that actually have a shot at protecting others, gives me a uh, stronger ground than I might otherwise have for criticizing government policy as of today, this April 15th, 2020. So I've uh, uh, managed to avoid entering any building other than my home for a full month, all the way from March 13th to April 11th. When I contracted a sore throat on March 15th, I started wearing a mask. Every, you know, when, when I would leave my room, uh, sometimes even out in the yard, I purchased no masks, no sanitizer, or at least not hand sanitizer. I already had a little and I made it last. I've raised concerns about uh, other demonstrations, you know, that uh, where people are getting within six feet of each other. My one demonstration has been separated from other people and masked up. I'm doing everything that can practically be done to help reduce COVID spread because I believe the innocent until proven guilty concept even when it applies to government. They are innocent of lying to us about COVID until proven guilty. So we should be taking a, an above all do no harm approach as we interact with the world. Having said that, let's talk about how much the government seems to be getting wrong or seems to be getting out of perspective in New Hampshire. Now, on the rare occasions when I'm in the downtown of my own town, <laughs> Winchester, because I don't get out that much, uh, it looks awful normal. Uh, and that's because New Hampshire's reaction is more laid back than that of many other states. And there is a popular belief that uh, Governor Sununu is doing what he can to make sure that we can do what we need to do you know, as in terms of average citizens engaging in commerce. Uh, were he to go further, he would be at some serious political risk. But if there's really so much concern over people getting it within six feet of each other and possibly spreading this or that, then we need to be looking at the things the government is doing that are helping the plague. One such thing is their practice of continuing to incarcerate, I guess, thousands of New Hampshireites and people who aren't even from here. Some of them mainly just because they aren't from here. So a, re a release of all uh, victimless criminals from their jail systems would be a huge step towards reducing the spread of COVID. Remember, we should trust history more than we trust headlines. And the history is that the last great pandemic, if you want to use the word pandemic, was the Spanish flu. Uh, and it, I mean, unless you count just normal flus, uh, the Spanish flu <clears throat> started, or at least uh, turned into what it turned into, precisely because people were cramped into tight conditions. Most notably the U.S. troops who were training at Kansas and packed into uh makeshift barracks. Uh, the U.S. apparently almost single-handedly through its, you know, uh, monomaniacal hatred of Germany turned the flu into a thing that can kill you in 30 seconds uh, from onset of first symptoms. Uh, and by U.S. I mean U.S. government. They did this accidentally and with uh, relatively honorable intentions the Germans did need to be defeated uh, in the 1918 era, but 
there's this endless history of Western governments doing stuff that creates uh, bigger problems than the ones they're going after. So they they knock down the Kaiser, they get the Spanish flu. And then, uh, they, and then after that, uh, after knocking down the Kaiser, they also get Hitler. But because of their my maniac, maniacal uh, crusade against the, against the Kaiser, which, which where the, where, where the country was focused on that and nothing else, and the flu was they just pretended it wasn't happening. Uh, now, now it's the opposite problem. We, you, the, the, the America and much of the West is pretending like nothing's happening except COVID, and they've forgotten about the war risk that they're creating by uh, gutting the economy. That's what happens when you gut economies, you get wars. You know, they knock down Hitler, they get Stalin running Berlin. In the process of knocking down communism, they create in the process of knocking down communism, they create Al Qaeda. And they knock down Al Qaeda, they create ISIS. So the monomania is back. It's aimed at COVID and it's creating something worse. We don't know exactly what that's gonna be. The simple prediction would probably be depression followed by war. Best case scenario there is probably a cold war of some kind. But a U.S. civil war is now on the table as a dreaded, unwelcome, unhelpful possibility. The folks who run the nuclear clock, if you remember that thing from the Cold War era, well, it never went away, and neither did the nuclear threat. That thing's closer to midnight now than it's ever been in history. As uh, Americans and Chinese try to blame each other for the COVID crisis, and the, uh, the Russians, again, like, as with history, they've just been completely forgotten uh, two months after no one could talk about anything else, Two months after they were under every bed and in, in infecting every election in the United States, supposedly, with their $50,000 expenditure or whatever it was. Now that no one's paying any attention to them, I'm starting to find them interesting again. Anyway, we're supposed to be looking at the things the government is doing to actively help the plague. Uh, or help, help, really, I should say, help raise the overall death toll in the United States per month. Yeah, let my people go. Stop confining them into prisons. At least the o at least the ones who are not accused of directly harming anyone. Drug offenders, tax offenders, violation of probation, disorderly conduct. Recently, some immigration activists uh, got together a convoy of vehicles and did a, like a march of Jericho, a drive of Jericho <laughs> around the Dover jail. They got decent numbers and decent publicity, uh, trying to get uh, jailed immigrants released. Good on them. At least they're doing something. The ACLU is also on this question, on this case, uh, or I should call I call it the NH Civil Liberties Union. Uh, they're trying to get people released from jail, too, on a relatively large scale. So you maybe one good thing out of this crisis. And, of course, one or two of them, or maybe a, sm maybe a higher number, will commit some actual violent crime later, and no one will focus on anything else. The lives that were saved by this release and the COVID infections that were prevented will just be forgotten. On the upside, uh, Maine... Maine's government has been able to take immediate action to ease access to birth control. This is something I hadn't thought of. This is neat. Uh, they're making it easier to use birth control so that uh, we don't have too much of a baby boom resulting from this crisis. Now, I was thinking about the baby boom. I was going to predict it. We'll probably get a baby boom out of this with people locked up in their houses. And at least Maine is doing something that's not adding new restrictions. Here in Winchester, the government is actually continuing to meet. I guess it'd be called, I think it'd be called the Board of Selectmen. I haven't actually checked on that, uh, but they, they would be they're meeting normally, except they're not allowing public comment. So that's an issue. I think I'm going to raise it in person at a safe distance. Additionally, additionally, the Winchester Police Department has just announced 
believe this or not, they've announced a secret arrest, if that's possible. It's a, a semi-secret arrest would be a better word for it. They're basically saying that they arrested someone and they're not telling anyone who it is. <laughs> or or they're, at least they're not posting who it is. So I need to find out more about that, too. You know, I should point out, this is actually a little off topic here, but there is a history to look at again. History is so important. Uh, if you can tolerate it, sci-fi is more interesting, I know. Uh, during the Spanish flu, the measures that they took in San Francisco actually worked. And so, and so what they did in San Francisco is actually pretty similar to what's being done now around the country. Uh, so there is a historical precedent for uh, combating this kind of problem by making people wear masks and... Uh, you know, canceling any kind of gathering and stopping marches or assemblies and church services. In San Francisco, they actually gunned people down for not wearing masks outdoors. In China, that's kind of been the approach as well. And these are these are, are these are not um, these are ends justify the means people taking action, but their ends actually are being achieved. So what that does tell us is that there could be something to this idea of social distancing and self-quarantine and stay-at-home orders and so forth. Those actually may work. So if they're to be undertaken with a grain of salt, they're also to be criticized with a grain of salt. And ideally, we should be trying to come up with alternative solutions uh, as opposed to just criticizing what the government's doing. And I may, not, I may not be very good at that in this particular commentary. I'll have a few ideas. Uh, the truth is it's going to take me some time to really game out a scenario I think would be uh, uh, best, and maybe by then it's too late. A course of action, I think, would be best rather than scenario. That's not the right word. For now, I'm still, you know, we're still in the early days of this crisis, and I'm still thinking off the cuff in a lot of ways. Oh, here is a solution of sorts. Uh, you can go to nextdoor.com. This is a place that lets you connect with your neighbors online, and I've noticed that the one in Winchester was not very active. It didn't seem like it was very active in February, but now it's gotten sufficiently active that I've gotten involved there. And uh, made at least one online friend, maybe I guess two, uh, who I, I think will develop into trading partners here. And that could be very important uh, depending on how <clears throat> deep and long this crisis gets. And whether it gets to the point where it's really negatively affecting shore sho uh, store shopping. Right now the stores feel pretty normal. And I was pleased to see that in uh, at, at the Winchester Kulix, Toilet paper is now running at a uh, dollar a roll, and I'm talking about some awful small rolls. So they're letting prices come up so that the shortages drop down, and toilet paper is for sale in the building. If they had been charging 50 cents a roll, there would have been no toilet paper there. It's funny how, you know, <laughs> two, two months ago, we were getting fairly close to having a law that would uh, ban plastic, free plastic baggies at grocery stores, right? One of the coolest things in a grocery store, in my mind. Uh, but now, those are mandated. <laughs> so, 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 and uh, we, you, weren't allow, you weren't allowed to have a mask on. Now, they're mandated, basically, practically, and not, not really so much in New Hampshire, but they're definitely encouraged in certain circumstances. But it's just funny how the government is such a seesaw, you know, it's such a yo-yo, it's such a back forth. It, you know, a hundred years ago in the United States, racism was practically mandated and now uh, it's practically illegal. So just because the government's telling you to do something doesn't mean that, that very shortly af thereafter, they're not going to completely run a 180, admit that they were completely wrong to begin with, and ban you from thinking the way they were just thinking, or doing what they were just doing, or what they were just telling you to do. It, it, it undermines their original message, right? And it undermines the message they have now. 
Uh, who would have thought that I'd be the guy who would be advocating for reusable <laughs> or uh, re yeah, reusable uh, grocery bags? Anyway, I advocate the right to use such bags should you choose, although not against the wishes of a, not against the wishes of a business owner, of course. You know, I keep hearing uh, claims that people are on edge and stuff like that. And again, my experience is limited by definition and by nature. But what I'm seeing is people seeming like to go out of their way to be more friendly since they have to be at a distance. Uh, you know, and I entered the uh, a, a store, uh, I guess a couple days ago, uh, one of the ladies who was just running the cash cash register, she was relatively far away from me. She wasn't alone. There were other people talking to her. She made a point of yelling out a, a welcome greeting to me, and I thought that was neat, and I, I think that encapsulates what I'm seeing going on. Other people who have done that, you know, and people who aren't even working, have no reason to really interact with me, they'll greet me from a distance, you know, and so forth, in a way that they wouldn't have normally. So that's what I'm seeing. What they say, what's they say, what is, uh, what is it they say you should... Um, you should believe what you see, not what you hear. That doesn't mean I think it'll last. I think the risks are still, uh, the, the likelihood is still that uh, society in the United States will degenerate as money starts running out and people start getting desperate. Right now, they're making that extra effort to be nice that uh, I think will change. Completely switching topics, or almost completely switching topics again. You know, they, they say that, or maybe I am not the only one that says this, but, you know, it doesn't matter so much what uh, what the laws are. What matters is uh, what you're actually allowed to do, right? So, right now, there's no law that says you can't use a, a reusable baggie in a grocery store. Uh, there's just this executive order. Uh but you can't do it. On the other hand, uh, the executive order says you can't assemble with more than 10 people, and folks have been doing it, and the police have been leaving them alone. You know, the other thing I notice as, um, as this uh, goes on is that the, the number of existing laws and bans is so great that to do anything sort of, to, to, just, to just sort of uh, be a little bit nimble and do something slightly different, it's almost like, wow, uh, I'm not sure I can legally do this very slightly different thing from what would normally be done. Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll just have to do it and see if they, they come after me. And we have to hope that some government officials will use a little bit of discretion and at least warn you, you know, when, you, when you've when you strayed outside uh, the rules, because... It's often very difficult to tell whether a new action of some kind is allowed or not. And that's the other really insidious, deadly thing about uh, some of what the governor is doing in New Hampshire uh, with the, these executive orders that sort of they have now you have to be sort of like on the list of allowed people to do certain things. These people are allowed to do this and these other people are allowed to do that. It, it reminds me of a prediction I made around 2012 that we, we, we could what could wind up in a and this is on this is on a video back back in that day so I, this is on the record but the the idea that we could get into a situation in the US that's a little bit like North Korea not in every respect but in the respect that you you have to have like an authorization to do something as opposed to you know you can do anything that's not illegal it becomes the opposite you can do only that which is not you can only do that which is specifically provided for in law right we could get to a situation like that and this this crisis seems to be that seems to be one of the dangers that this crisis is taking us close to for instance, the idea that you, like, instead of having an executive order that says, okay, everyone who is a, an exotic dancer must stay home, you know, that's, you know, <laughs> instead of saying that, they say everyone who is a, a social worker is allowed to go to work, you know, or something like that. I don't know if that's really the case, but they're saying, so, you know, stuff like everyone who's a medical worker is allowed to travel and go to work normally and stuff like that. Uh, so... It's, it's backwards from the traditional way 
in the United States that you can do anything that's not illegal. Now, you can do anything that the executive order says you can do, right? It feels that way. So again, the solution is to just do your thing and not pay too much attention to what's allowed and not under the law. Pay a lot of attention to what's ethical for you to do. What can you do that above all does no harm? I wanted to give a shout out and a kudos to New Hampshire Public Radio, which published this sentence at the bottom of one of its articles. And remember, people are more likely to read the bottom of an article than the middle of an article. Uh, quote, uh, unlike the majority of states, New Hampshire doesn't have its own law against price gouging. Many economists oppose those laws, arguing that price controls contribute to hoarding and a mismatch between supply and demand, unquote. Wow, glorious. I mean, I thought I'd never see that in print. Even acknowledging the concept that maybe uh, a high price is not a crime. Uh, it's like that, uh, it's like that, I think there's this movie where this guy shows up at a, you know, he's trying to buy a shotgun. There's a riot going on. The guy who's selling a shotgun wants to, you know, he's a, he's a gun store owner. He says, well, yeah, yeah, if you got a thousand dollars, I'll give you a shotgun. He says, what? A thousand dollars? And then the, the gun store owner says, look, you're the guy standing in line at a gun store during a riot. <laughs> so, I think that says it all. You're the guy looking for hand sanitizer during a plague. Don't be surprised if it costs $15 an ounce. Or, well, probably more like $15 a pound. All right. I can't think of anything else to add at this moment, but many other thoughts are stacking up in my pokey but fertile brain, and I will share them with you as they appear. As you can see, this video, or audio, actually is uh, over 20 minutes long and the idea there is to make sure that uh, people like me who look for audio content on YouTube are able to find stuff you know that's at least 20 minutes long that's worth actually downloading and listening to while eating and if you see a, a Ridley video that is uh, over 20 minutes that is almost always what it is uh, it's a an audio for you to listen to while eating I know when I look around YouTube, I love to go to places like Andreas Antonopoulos' channel where, you know, anything he's got that's over 20 minutes long is probably going to be worth listening to, especially if it's a speech. So I just batch download those, and there's a lot of other people I'll do that with. Hopefully I'm interesting enough, uh, and my commentary is counterintuitive enough that some people will feel that way uh, about it and download it for listen. <laughs> this one definitely wasn't worth watching. All right. <clears throat> Ridley out. Be safe. Nope. Do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM, Feds don't want you to hear them.